So if you take a look at the folder in front of you, you will see many facts that are enlightening about our current situation. Hey everybody, it's time for I Hear I See Radio. You're listening to KRUI in Iowa City. It's 89.7 FM on your radio or KRUI.FM if you're streaming online. My name is Justin Comer. This is a show about local music. Today I have three friends with me. Let's go from my left to right. Number one. Hi, my name is Will Yeager. Hey, Will. Welcome back. Will has been on the program two times in the past. One time just playing bass, another time just talking. Today, he's just talking again. <laughs> and number two. Ashley Yachty. Ashley Yachty, my wife. She's been in here before as well. And one more. Michelle Guild. Yes, everyone that listens to the show knows who that is. Yep. This is your 75th appearance. 75th anniversary, <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Actually, this is the 37th episode of this show. Whoa. So congratulations, guys. You're on number 37. We made it. Whoa. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, how's everybody doing? Hey. So good. good. Yeah. School starts tomorrow, right? Yes. Not yeah. for me. Well, Will's the only student in the room. <laughs> Aw. So uh, what do you got going on this semester, Will? Uh, quite a bit. Um, I am a TA starting this year. So, right, yeah, you weren't teaching last year. No, I was just fellowing, mm-hmm. whatever the verb <laughs> yeah. of that is. So what are your uh, TA responsibilities? It's an excellent question. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully that will become clear by yeah. the end of this week. Yeah. Um, but mostly I uh, assist in the double bass studio um, teaching lessons to non-music majors. Ah, yeah. Um, don't really know how many students I have yet, so that makes scheduling their lessons um, a bit of a challenge. Um, I think I think I have four. Cool. We'll see. And then there's also just uh, I run the, the social media for the studio. Oh, cool. Um, That's a big job. It, it is. We have a lot of we have a lot of fans. <laughs> if, you're, if you're listening, to, if you're listening out there, please look up the University of Iowa Double Bass Studio Facebook page. I think I like you guys already, but I'll I'll check while we're here in the studio. Yeah, I'll yeah. go like them. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I I have noticed that the population in the city has probably tripled in the past couple of days. There's At like least a million yeah. humans were wandering. I'm over the it sidewalks. already. It's it's a lot. It's a lot to take in. Yeah, summer was a, kind of a reprieve from crowds yeah when's winter break uh that's gonna be like (laughs) mid-december thanksgiving is first (laughs) we've got about four months until then okay yeah uh so how was everybody's weekend amazing i just sat at home all weekend and watched kitchen nightmares Mm. i watched i am a killer i finished it today yeah i I finished that yesterday (laughs) how is that so good yeah it's definitely yeah. worth a watch. Yeah. I sympathized with at least 100% of the murders on death row. I know. I oh, found wow. myself cheering up a few <laughs> yeah. times. No, yeah. No, they were really? like, they seemed like genuine people. Yeah. I mean, they they are people, but. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it does make them. Genuinely. Maybe. I'm not going to go there. I'm anti-death penalty, so I'm not going to make any jokes. <laughs> yeah. I, I just thought it was going to be like really dark. I was like, I to manage when I. Yeah, it's. I mean, it, it gets dark, but then it lightens up, and then it gets dark again. Yeah, I. I don't know if it's <laughs> something for me to watch. I had a pretty busy weekend. What'd you do? Uh, well, let's start with Friday. So Friday night, Ashley and I had dinner with our friends Chelsea and David in uh, Cedar Rapids. So that was fun. And then after that, Will and I and our friend Carlos, Carlos, who's the other I hear I see organizer. We went to Hatchet Jacks, a new business in town, where you can throw axes at wood. Nice. <laughs> it's it's really that simple, but way more fun. It is pretty than you fun. Could possibly imagine. Yeah, Will is considering uh, starting his own team because they're going to do some sort of league play there. Yeah. It, oh, uh, cool. Yeah, it's it's basically going to be just wombat. Um, yeah, it'll be me and you and Carlos. Yeah. <laughs> Were you guys good at it? I think we got 
decent at it. We so we played we played three games where we kept score, and we each won one. So nice. you know, we're, yeah, we're great bandmates. Mm-hmm. I think the highest score of the night was like thirty-five or so. I think the one that I won had the highest score. Yeah, but do you remember the number? Because I don't. <laughs> it was like thirty-six. Or something. Okay, is cool. it like skee ball scores? Like the most points in the middle, and then yeah, it is like, like darts. That, yeah. Kind of. yeah. yeah. Okay. But I, mean, I have to say that the games that I did not win were, were quite shameful. <laughs> um, I think I got a 33 when I won. Nice. Mm-hmm. Seems, seems good in comparison to the 35 that was the high score. Yeah, that's, that's 10 rounds. So, uh, so like 20 throws. And the highest score you can get on any round is six mm-hmm. until the last round in which case you can get 10 on a throw. So real quick, six, <laughs> six times 18 plus 20 is the maximum score. I'm not doing that in my head, but... So you got a really low score, it sounds like. Compared to <laughs> the highest amount of right. points you can get. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> There's and room for improvement, but I think we got, we got a lot better over the hour that we were playing. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Sounds like it'd be a good stress reliever, too. Yeah, there's a you can be pretty aggressive with your throw. Yeah, you don't actually want to because I was I started by throwing really hard because, of course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but it's weird. If you, it's easy. Like if you throw too hard, it won't it won't stick because it's all about like the rotation of the hatchet and air. Right. Yeah. Finding like the optimal contact point with yeah. the blade and the target. You got to get the sharp part of the blade to kind of slide into the wood. Yes. Yeah, because <laughs> what if it like hit the handlebar and bounced back and axed you in the face? That's possible. It didn't go quite that far, but... You had to throw uh, it pretty hard. Carlos <laughs> did almost hit his leg. <laughs> oh, my God. The first thing you do is sign a waiver when you go in. No. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. If right, I die, it's right inside fault. the front door. Yeah. Right inside the front door, you sign a waiver. The only two oh, activities no. that are possible are throwing hatchets and drinking beer. Mm-hmm. Wow. Those are the only services offered. <laughs> hmm. Recipe for a safe, fun night. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and a free ambulance ride. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, so then Saturday, I went to Galloping Ghost Arcade, which is just outside of Chicago. I played a bunch of video games. How was Sweet. that? That's awesome. Pretty awesome. They have like 650 games or so wow. out on the floor. <laughs> it's That's really intense. Lot. Yeah, yeah. How many how many bags of quarters did you take? Uh, well, the way it works there is you pay twenty bucks to get in, and then everything is set to free play. Oh my god! Yeah, that seems like a good deal. Yeah, it's great yeah. if you want to spend a whole day like staring at old tube televisions. It's yeah. a great deal. I absolutely want to do. That. <laughs> yeah, it's it can be pretty like physically yeah draining, but it's fun. Do they have pinball? Uh, they have like three pinball machines and they weren't on yesterday. Wow, sounds cool. <laughs> so it seems like they're not super uh, enthusiastic <laughs> about pinball. That's but a it's, bummer. It's kind of one or the other. Like, it's either like just pinball or just... Yeah, that's true. There's like pinball strictly yeah. pinball arcades. The pinball is also like, it, it takes a lot more maintenance because it's all actual physical parts yeah. interacting with each other. That's so true. I really got into pinball here. In shape. There's pinball everywhere here. It's in, like, every bar. Yeah. Where do you play the most? Um, I like the Lord of the Rings one at the mill. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm not a big pinball head, so I don't know the tables really very well. Yeah. What do you like about the Lord of the Rings table? I don't know. I just really like Lord of the Rings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we were talking about that the other day, that you liked those books. Yeah. They're really good. Yeah. <laughs> I just, you, I assume, have read Lord of the Rings, Will, right? Yes. Yeah. I uh, I actually just finished reading Lord of the Rings in May of this year, <laughs> and uh, pretty good. <laughs> yeah. It just like I tried to read Solid. it when I was a kid, like when I was like eleven, and it was just like too old English for me. Oh my! See, that's I that's guess. what I read it for the first time. Yeah, yeah. me too. I, I, I think just, I was like thirteen. I was enthralled, and you guys took to it, but I, oh, oh yeah, yeah. I loved it. You probably had more friends than I did when I was 11. Yeah, me too. Mm, probably not. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Take that back. No, that was a pretty bad year for friends, actually. <laughs> yeah, but I liked it. I like uh, I like the two towers the best, I think. Yeah, that's I like, a good one. I like tree people. Yeah, me too. It's pretty cool. Tree people. 
Sorry, Ashley, you haven't read the book. I don't have a clue. You don't know what we're talking about. Nope. Have you seen the movies? Nope. Oh my gosh, they're so good. When we say tree people, we mean they're like trees, but they're people. Yeah. 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 They're so cool. If that went over your head, sorry. Yeah. They're really cool in the movie. That's way too much. Yeah. Shepherds of the forest. Mm hmm. (laughs) Yeah. It's uh, been a few years, but I. Um, I I like to watch all three of the extended versions mm-hmm. of the movies in one go. Me too. It takes like twelve hours. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah, I've never. Uh, so next time you're taking the opportunity, you like have a day off, Ashley. If you want to. That sounds like I'm gonna fall asleep in five minutes. <laughs> no but way. You have to prepare. <laughs> it's uh. <laughs> you and Justin will come over and we'll. He can we'll vouch. I will See, fall asleep. Yeah, Ashley's problem is she can't watch any movies. <laughs> <laughs> I will fall asleep. <laughs> yeah. I really am 80 years old. <laughs> so I was at Galloping Ghost all day yesterday, and then this morning, Will and I recorded some stuff with Carlos. We got up early, and we knocked out some videos. a.m. Yeah. Yeah, so those will be coming we soon. serious musicians. I was very confused when he got up at 7. Yeah. And before me. Me too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We were productive boys this morning. Good job. Thanks. Yeah, go us. It's more than I can say (laughs) with my kitchen nightmare. (laughs) Mm -hmm. How is your actual kitchen? My kitchen? Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. I have a new fridge and a new stove. Thanks to my landlord. Yeah, Yeah, so actually, yeah, my kitchen's great. Thank you for asking. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, cool. Cool. All right. Uh, You guys want to listen to some music? Sure. Yeah. Let's do it. All right. So everyone knows how our weekends were. So now it's time to listen to a song. The first song I have on the playlist is a recording of our friend Joe Sorensen playing his song called It Gets Better, and this was performed live at The Mill January 20th, 2017. It gets better, 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 I don't know what that means, but I'll sing it out to you like it's everything. It gets better, 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 I don't know what that means.
tacos, a cheese, and a large soda. That's $10,012. Please drive around. Wait, 10000 what? It's obvious you're buzzed and driving. I've only had a few. I'm fine. Yeah, the food's 12 bucks, but getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Please drive around. Actually, just park and come in. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic <laughs> Safety Administration and the Ad Council. <laughs> All right, and we're back. Welcome back to I Hear, I See Radio. We were not prepared to listen to that drunk driving PSA. It was really good. <laughs> Came as a surprise to us. Uh, I will uh, endorse that message, though. Don't do not do that. Yeah, just park and come in. Mm-hmm. Interpret my laughter as endorsement. Yeah. <laughs> Please. Yeah, so I, uh, I thought that it might be interesting for us to discuss some of Will's summer activities this year. So we'll oh. uh, maybe maybe we'll go in order. So summer started in in May. So what was your first summer adventure this year? Uh, what did I? It feels like a very long time ago. <laughs> it, it does. It does. It was like three months. So um, well May. Uh, like right after school ended, mm-hmm. um, I did this uh, chamber music tour. Like with the university, right? Um, so, you know, here here at school, we have a pretty pretty robust uh, chamber music program, um, led by uh, Beth Oaks. Uh, she does a really good, great job coordinating that. Uh, so, through Art Share, another great organization here um, at the school, we were able to get funding and organize a tour across Iowa with. Um, how many different groups did we have? I think three. Three, three different chamber groups, and there was some. They were somewhat modular, um, and the, each group had different repertoires. So the concerts were all different. But basically, we all pile into to minivans and uh, hit the various hot spots of uh, Western Iowa. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Putting there's the, plenty. <laughs> like putting the word in the street. Uh, so I mean, it's it's. And the whole purpose of Art Share uh, is is mostly outreach oriented. Uh, so that we were we did a few sort of I guess standard concerts, but it was mostly uh, trying to do performances at libraries and churches and um, trying to get people that you normally wouldn't find in the concert hall to come out and hear hear some chamber music. So that was a lot of fun. Uh, do you remember which cities you hit? Oh. Uh, let's see. Do you know if you went to Sioux City? No, we didn't get okay. that far. Okay, <laughs> that was uh, that's where I was born, so I was. Just oh, okay. Make that connection. Uh, we we did we did something in Des Moines, um, Toledo, uh, Toledo, Iowa. Yeah, I don't know where that is. Yeah, I only know of Toledo, Ohio. <laughs> I know it exists, but I don't know where it is. <laughs> okay, yeah, I've been there and I don't know where it is. Well. <laughs> assume you weren't driving so <laughs> uh probably i don't know <laughs> um so that so that was fun um and then after that i did some some non-productive uh, going to the beach sorts of things um but the real the real party started in june um so i did a few different music festivals this summer um and, and so when i'm you know for people that are involved like as students or you know, professional musicians, like a music festival means different things to different people. So like I, I, I found myself having to explain like, no, I didn't just like go to, you know, Bonnaroo or, right. <laughs> or something <Yeah>. like that. <laughs> um, so for those of you who maybe aren't aware, there's a sort of a standard thing um, in the sort of uh, way music education works here. Um, during the summer when most people aren't in school, you can um, apply or audition to go you know, some of them last all summer, some are a week, just a few weeks. But basically, then they're all for different, different sorts of things, you know, focused on orchestral playing or chamber music playing. Um, basically, you just you pay a lot of money <laughs> and you go hang out for a couple of weeks and just play music all day. Um, so I uh, went to New Music on the Point, uh, which is in Vermont. Mm hmm. I love Vermont. Vermont is amazing. Yeah, you it's have family over there, state. right? Yeah. I had never been to Vermont. Isn't it pretty? It's it's amazing. I would I would not be opposed to to ending up there in, in some capacity. Yeah. 
It's great. Um, so new music on the point is basically like like summer camp. <laughs> Um, like it's like kid little kids go to do like chamber music camp. Like there's some like group of like seven year olds coming right after us. Oh, so this wow. is mostly college, uh, mostly like like grad school um, age ish kind yeah. of people. And just to be clear for the listener, you are in grad school. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if we were specific about I'm that not, before. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I'm not seven. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So like basically there for two weeks we're just in the middle of nowhere on a lake um it's, we were there a lot of performers a lot of composers um and all the composers are writing music for different uh configurations of ensembles of people there um so especially this this festival was really oriented around that the collaboration between the composers that were at the festival and the performers that were there um so i played I had, well, I had I played a bunch of music. Um, I think I played like four or five different composer fellows' works. Nice. Um, How long were you there again? Two weeks. Two weeks. It's a pretty busy two weeks. Oh yeah. <laughs> the, the schedules at these things are generally pretty pretty intense. Mm. You're, you know, you're rehearsing and doing stuff all day, and usually up uh, most of the night, <laughs> <laughs> um, carousing in some form or another. I uh, had. Yeah, one of my favorite things about new music on the point was just getting to be in Vermont. It's like if you had a particular rehearsal block where I didn't have anything to do, you know, I have a free hour. I guess I'll just hop in the kayak, take it out in the lake. Awesome. You know, it's a it's pretty it's a pretty special place. Nice. Um, I'd, I'd love to go back. Uh, uh, so, do we all want to move to Vermont? Yeah, let's it's, go it's now. A, yeah, yeah, it seems to be the consensus. Okay, let's go buy uh, some property. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what city or town you were in? Uh, I think it was uh, Leicester. We were, on, we were on Lake Dunmore. Never heard of it. <laughs> I know it's only like five towns in Vermont. That yeah, must be we were north. pretty we we're pretty close to Brandon. It's like we were like an hour from Burlington. Oh, okay. That yeah, that's um, like the main town yeah. sort of. Yeah. yeah. I, I've I, never really been there though. I discovered like Burlington is the smallest, biggest city of a state. Yeah, yeah, that's it, right. It's yeah. like, yeah, it's the not largest. Even half a million people. It's the largest city in Vermont, and every other state in the U.S. has a larger, largest city. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, by a margin. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's, that just sounds amazing to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Vermont is so cute. Everything about it is so adorable. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. pretty idyllic. Mm -hmm. hey i forgot to uh i was gonna drop this at the beginning of the show but uh we have a a lineup ready to announce for our show this month we're having a concert at the mill on friday august 31st at 8 p.m uh can somebody make like an air horn noise for me wah, wah, wah. perfect all right so that lineup <laughs> includes purchase a uh, electronic Perfect. musician who has has been uh, on this radio show as well as performed on a concert of ours before, and we're also going to bring on two new groups, sort of. Sorry, I have to qualify that a little bit. All right, so one of them is uh, Fever Love. They're formerly known as Creeping Charlie, and they're brand new to our show, so that'll be fun. And the second duo is a drum and bass thing called Tree Cloud. And uh, that features members Marco Cacho and Peter something. Sorry, Peter, I forgot your last name. But wow. it's okay. We don't know each other that well. Okay. <laughs> but they, uh, they've been on our, our shows before <laughs> under different uh, ensemble groups. They were part of Nonprofit, and they played with Sasha Burden back in the day. So they are old friends in a new configuration. So that'll be fun. Cool. Yeah. Are you coming? I think so, yeah. Cool. I, <laughs> See you there. Yeah. Are you coming, Will? Yeah, of course. All right, cool. See you there. <laughs> and I'll see you several times before then, too. <laughs> I'll also be there, just FYI. Mm -hmm. Good. I'll see you. Then I'll come. <laughs> I mean, wow. I'm going because wow. there's fried pickles in the mill. So that's, I'll definitely Okay, be there. yeah, I'll be yeah. there. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. All right, so that's that's my announcement. Uh, what, uh, what came next for you this summer, Will? <laughs> uh, so I, I, I drove back. Um, it's like a 17 hour drive, by the way. <laughs> Fun. <laughs> yeah. I didn't do it all in one go, but, um, so I came back to Iowa for about 36 hours. <laughs> Is that when we saw you? Fourth no, that July. was like, was that July? 
We saw him on the 4th of July, but I don't know when that was in his That's right. travel yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys came over for the, the, the 4th. Um, so that was that was after this the next thing. Okay, so th- um, this will come later. Yes. Sorry, I'm we'll, doing things out of order. We'll get there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, so then I went to uh, Splice, Splice Institute, which mm-hmm. is held at Western Michigan University in Kalamazoo um, with uh, Carlos um, and another friend of ours, uh, of all of ours, um, another composition student here at school, Lydia Dempsey. Mm. Um, you should get her on the show sometime. That'd be fun, yeah. I'll talk to her. Yeah. Uh, so the three of us were all doing that, so we, we n- none of us were too excited about the prospect of staying in dormitories. <laughs> right. Um, so we, we got an Airbnb uh, close to campus. And how long was this? This was just one week. Mm-hmm. Um, and completely sort of similar, but uh, uh, also very different. Uh, this was more of a workshop environment. So like we were at, like actually like taking classes in the mornings. So the, the 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 focus or the the primary focal point at Splice is electroacoustic composition and performance. Right. Which, uh, uh, if you are not familiar with the term, means pretty much exactly what it sounds like: electroacoustic music. So it involves both acoustic sources of sound and electronic sources of sound. So, for example, will. Maybe you uh, you perform some electroacoustic music there. I did. Mm-hmm. Um, so you can go and just take classes if you want, which a lot of people do, um, just in various learning, getting uh, more familiar with you know certain pieces of software. Um, but so both, I, so it's also again both performers and composers go there. So you can you can just go take classes, or you can, in addition to taking classes, do what they call a concert collaboration, where you basically you get paired with so, you know, as a performer, I was paired with a composer. And so we sort of have a, like a project that we work on throughout the week. And then there's a concert at the end where we play all these pieces. Um, so I was, I was paired with a great composer who I think is working on his PhD at Brown, uh, Martim Galvao. Um, I'm so bad at, like my, at Portuguese. I'm so well, very sorry about that last That's time. okay. Martim. I think, I think um, that's uh, true for everyone in the room right now. Yeah. So <laughs> we're not going to do any better. <laughs> sounded good to me <laughs> nice uh so he he was you uh was using a, a pretty pretty widely used piece of software in this in this arena called a uh, max msp mm-hmm. um and came up with something pretty amazing uh so the piece involved uh me basically using my base to uh surf the internet oh interesting um yes so in this situation your base is the uh, acoustic source of sound yes and max msp is creating electronic sounds i assume yeah maybe you can give us some more specific details yeah um there is some ele- um electronically generated sound um some light processing of the bass well no actually the bass was never processed um so uh and there's a bit of theater involved so you have hmm. it's um you have to have video to really to uh, do the piece justice like i just recently got the audio recording you know from back from the festival and it's like well this <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh and the, the theater the theatrical part consists of you know I, I go up on stage and i have a laptop and of course what's be, what's on the screen is being projected and there's like an installer wizard that he made for this thing called music buddy <laughs> just like a sort of like clippy you know the paper clip yeah right right <laughs> so you're like it's like you can dispense with your keyboard and use your musical instrument to interface with your and so like i click install and it like the meter goes and you know, it stops like right before the end you know he so he made all this it's like not really happening <laughs> right it's all just a video um, thing. yeah very nice touch um and then there are three parts of the piece uh and basically he set up certain conditions and parameters uh based on like register like how low or high you know the notes i were i was playing are um and mapped it so that based on what i played it would move the cursor in certain ways um which sounds not complicated but is incredibly complicated yeah, yeah. it realize. sounds complicated I, I have, honestly i have an idea of how to do that but it seems like it would take a lot of testing to get it to work right <laughs> Yeah, and it's completely dependent on successful pitch tracking, which yeah, is with, hard. With lo- it's hard, period. But like with l- low register instruments, is just you know kind of a nightmare, mm-hmm. especially on the bass, because uh, the um, the 
it's just so rich uh, with overtones. So mm-hmm. the, like if I play like my low open E string, the computer here is like 70 notes, yeah. Not, <laughs> yeah. not an open E. Yeah. Um, but we got it, we got it figured out. Um, <laughs> so I'm, I, I didn't have a score because I was just improvising. Um, so it was basically a very like specific environment to, in which to improvise. And I sort of had the, one of the f- uh, fun challenges of this was sort of like, figuring out how to be successful like in the task like so there are three parts to the piece in the first like so when i install this thing in the in the piece first thing that comes up is a youtube video and i I have to like move the cursor to like the like button and click it (laughs) Um, so i have a very specific task to accomplish but i'm also still trying to to play something that sounds good (laughs) or is interesting you want to improvise something that's like yeah enjoyable Exactly. For yourself and the audience. Yeah. So at first I was really worried about like these two like things being like cross purposes, but then throughout the week working on it, I feel pretty good about having got to a place where I'm like, you know, there's a very click like, I can, they, everybody can see if I'm moving the cursor or not. So like, but also generating something that was working at least interesting to hear. Um, and then the second part of the piece, the cursor was moving like on a pre-programmed path. And I was like, it was on Wikipedia, and so I was like, it was tra- at that point, it was tracking how loudly or softly I was playing. Uh-huh. Um, so I could, I was like, I would could like play something loud, and it would click. So I would like wait until the cursor was on like a link, and then click it. Yeah. So every time I played wow. a piece, I like, I'm like, you know, and you get like from the Wikipedia homepage, you're like three clicks, and you're, you know, who knows where. Yeah. Um, so it was different every time. Um, sometimes I would end up on a picture, and you know, then I can't go back, so I'm just clicking, <laughs> and just so you're just zooming in and out really quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so I, I got some, yeah, I got I got some pretty some pretty fun stuff. Okay. Uh, and then the last part of the piece, he had Google Maps pulled up of where we were in, at the school, and it was back to sort of the similar as the first movement, where certain things that I would play would move, like turn or move forward. So I was, and at this point, there was some electronically generated sound, but I was basically just like with what I was playing, like navigating through like the Google Map that was projected. Nice. It was, it, was, That's fun. it was a lot of fun. Yeah, that I sounds need, cool. Yeah, I really want. I really want to play it some more. I want to, so I need to get him to send me the patch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then we just need to find some more with a projector. Mm-hmm. Yeah, where we can do that. Yeah, that would be fun. Yeah. Uh, so it's uh, it's about time for us to uh, do our weather report. I've got it ready. Which, as usual, I'm delegating to Michelle because <laughs> she's she's our the official weather meteorologist. Girl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see what the weather is. The weather is currently 82 degrees Fahrenheit, Mm -hmm. but it feels like it's 84. So bust out those swim trunks (laughs) and then put them away because it's cloudy. (laughs) (laughs) And there is a wind east-southeast coming from the east-southeast at 8 miles per hour. Mm -hmm. Humidity, 59%. Dew point, 67%. Pressure, 29.91 inches. (laughs) What does that mean? Uh, of pressure, air pressure, uh, barometric pressure. Twenty nine pressures per inch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, twenty nine pressures per inch. I don't know, man. Yeah, I'm clicking on it. It's not telling me anything else. Oh wait, what's this? I mean, I think the people that need to know the pressure can probably figure out what that means from I the information you provided. Yeah, that's when they send up the balloon, right, to test the the pressure, the barometer balloon, or. That is what a barometer is. They, is or, the, or they just look at a barometer. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's boring. <laughs> yeah. That's true. We should all be sending up balloons every morning. Yeah. That would probably look pretty cool from space. <laughs> probably. Imagine a world where we all have to independently make our own weather forecast. Oh, boy. That'd be fun. <laughs> yeah. It would. We'd all have a different forecast. Yep. Okay, I'm going to play some music now, okay? <laughs> okay, cool. Thank you for uh, that weather report, Michelle. Yeah, you're welcome. I'm going to play uh, something from the University of Iowa Center for New Music 2006 CD called 20th Century American Music. And this is a composition by William Albright. It's called Abiding Passions. And this is uh, stage three from that piece, which is called Play by Play. Thank <laughs> you. 
Welcome back to I Hear I See Radio. That was our very own University of Iowa Center for New Music performing a piece by William Albright. It's stage three from Abiding Passions. It's called Play by Play. That's on their 2006 CD, 20th Century American Music, which I believe I found at Goodwill somehow. <laughs> <laughs> you can buy it wherever you buy CDs. Mm-hmm. I assume it's streaming somewhere online, but I don't know. I, I think some of the stuff is on spotify yeah but if that's how you listen to music i don't like you (laughs) you're anti-spotify huh (laughs) we'll save that for the next time i'm on the show (laughs) yeah we can rant about that at some point uh i also do not subscribe (laughs) i don't use it either i don't i don't either i have to admit we're all all pure but i i hate it yeah i don't use it in the car there's lots of reasons to hate it (laughs) everything that i listen to on there i also own own the cd Wow, that's nice of you. Or I, like I, or I own it very soon after. Got it. So you use it as sort of a trial run. Exactly. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, a, a quick summary is that Spotify doesn't pay artists really much of anything. Oh. That's, that's pretty much it. Yeah, which is you know not necessarily uh, unique to them, but it's... <laughs> <laughs> they like most things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> People. We do have some trouble with that. Uh <laughs> So speaking of the uh, Center for New Music here at the university, Will, you are a, a member of that now, right? That is correct. Yeah, you are part of that ensemble. Indeed. Do you know uh, what upcoming performances they might have? Um, yeah. We have a, some things going on this semester. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I, I shouldn't have sprung that on you. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so the first uh, concert we are doing is a portrait concert of recently retired uh, University of Iowa music professor. uh, Michael Eckert. Okay, (laughs) Professor (laughs) Eckert. Yes. Now Michael. I I never had him, so I I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, I took a uh, counterpoint class with him. I'm sorry. (laughs) Yeah, so he's retiring. I didn't... uh... Yes, he has has retired. Last year was his last year. Got it, got it. Um, So the first concert, we're doing all his music. Cool. Um... I briefly looked at the program. I think it's going to be a variety, like 
I think it maybe at least one piece is like full sinfonietta, the whole ensemble, and it's just other assortments of maybe some like duos and trios and just various instrumentations. That'll be fun. That's on September 23rd. Oh, nice. I pulled up the webpage while oh, you were God. talking. <laughs> uh, yeah, we have a guest uh, flutist coming in for a concert. That program looks very interesting. A lot of uh, a lot of the sort of 20th century flute classic um, mm-hmm. stuff. It says here on the website that she'll be playing with electronics as well. Electroacoustic performance. That's right. <laughs> Another <laughs> one. And her name is Linda Boast. Does that sound right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> It's September 25th for those of you who are interested. So for, for those of you that maybe don't know, one of the interesting things um, about uh, Center for New Music is not only is that an ensemble where we play stuff, but it's also a platform that brings in a lot of visiting artists and composers throughout the year. So it's also school concerts, but it's also a, a series of guest artist recitals, which I think is, is pretty neat. Yeah, it's a very... Uh, student-centered ensemble that is also bringing in guests from all around the country and occasionally from outside of the country. Yeah. (laughs) Which, compared to other ensembles at school, is is fairly unique. Yeah, yeah. And this is, I mean, not every university has an ensemble like this, so it's a a nice place to be if you're interested in this kind of music. That's why I'm here. Yeah. (laughs) It drew you here, so that's good. Uh, So we left off with uh, your adventure in vermont right splice or splice yes yeah. yeah and uh shall we continue sure. to learn about will yeager's summer <laughs> I, I hope it's uh living up to <laughs> um whatever you expected of it uh so after i finished up at splice i was back here for a few days had a little cookout which mm-hmm. is fun yeah ashley and i were there yeah we hung out at your house with a bunch of other musicians that's nice. Yeah, it's a good time. You want a, just a, an idea of what a, a Will Yeager cookout looks like? We spent most of it listening to John Zorn. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll listen to some noise saxophone. Yeah. <laughs> so, if you're into that. We know how to party. Hit me up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, I had a few days to learn all the music for my next thing, um, which was the Bang on a Can Summer Festival, uh, which is held in massachusetts at mass mocha the mm-hmm. massachusetts museum of contemporary art which is one of the most amazing places i've ever been just well worth the trip just to go on its own yeah and bang on a can is a huge important new music organization yeah so <laughs> it's cool that you got to take part in that yeah that's something i've been wanting to do for a while and I had mm-hmm. a great time and hopefully we'll get to shoot for doing it doing it again next summer if i can um, yeah, so Bang on a Can is sort of a multifaceted thing. It's an organization that was started in 1987. I don't know the year exactly, but I know it was in the 80s. <laughs> Pretty sure it was 87, because I heard, heard this a lot. <laughs> okay, yeah, there. yeah, they talk about themselves. Um, started, started by three composers, uh, Michael Gordon, Julia Wolf, and David Lang, mm-hmm. who were all at the festival sort of hanging out and, and teaching and stuff. Um, so the, they started this organization, sort of what they're, I guess the most known thing is they do the Bang on a Can Marathon. That was sort of their first activity, which was like a 10 hour long concert. And this is maybe something to go into on another show, but uh, at that particular time in New York City, there was a very, um, how to put it, uh, there was a very s- strong divide between uh, certain kinds of contemporary music, um, sort of referred to as like the uptown and downtown scenes. Mm-hmm. Um, so you had uh, a lot of the academic music um, and then you had people who at that at that time like Steve Reich and Philip Glass and you never saw these these people's music like on the same program um, so the mar- they, their, their intent with that marathon was to sort of uh, tear down those uh, unnecessary walls so I think it was like the first time you ever saw like uh, Babbitt and Reich on the same program so nice yeah, I don't think I knew that that was the intent originally. That's cool. Yeah, so I'm all about knocking down walls. Absolutely. So they, they came up during that time as students who were like kind of fed up with these sort of you know arbitrary fetters. Um, so that the marathon is kind of how they started the whole thing, and then they wanted to start a summer festival to you know to make an 
a similar place for students to come because when they were, when they were starting this whole thing, there was not a place for students to go who were interested in that music. So that it kind of became a home for that. Uh, so we were there for about three weeks. It's pretty it's pretty incredible. Uh, a lot of a lot. Speaking of Steve Reich, he was he was there. Oh yeah, did you wow. meet him? Uh, not really. <laughs> um, <laughs> I got to play some of his music, uh, but he was only there for like the last day. So, mm. was, um, he he like he was on stage like right next to my bass at one point, and I was just like, "What if Steve trips over my bass? Wouldn't that be cool? <laughs> <laughs> what will happen? <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. We get you know we get you know Ghanaian drumming, like Latin music, uh, like building bizarre instruments and then making all kinds of weird noise with them. Um, yeah, that's something that we talked about this morning while we were recording. Yeah, uh, you you want to build a an instrument out of PVC pipes and a baritone sax mouthpiece? I absolutely right? do. And I would like to help you in that dream. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to listen to the noises it makes. It's it's wonderful. I'm sure I'll end up playing it on this radio show. Yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I need to uh, take a minute to play a grant spot for for the radio station. So uh, let's let's hear that now. Support for KRUI is provided by Little Village. Little Village is Iowa City's independent, community-supported news and culture publication. Little Village's event calendar connects readers with critical cultural opportunities. Through journalism, essays, and events, Little Village works to improve our community according to core values, affordability and access, economic and labor justice, environmental sustainability, racial justice, gender equity, quality health care, quality education, and critical culture. Little Village can be found in print editions at local businesses in Iowa City, as well as online at littlevillagemag.com. <laughs> and welcome back to I Hear I See Radio. <laughs> I'm turning on everyone's mics when they're not ready to talk. Wasn't ready. <laughs> My name's Justin, for those of you just tuning in for the last 12 minutes of the show. Uh, yeah, so as I just said, we have 12 minutes left. Uh, we're kind of getting to the end of the show today. So, Will... I, I think we, we owe it to the audience to uh, finish, reach the conclusion of your summer story because we don't want to leave them without an ending. So maybe in the next three minutes or so, <laughs> could you <laughs> fill us in on the rest of your summer? Uh, well, where we left, uh, last left our hero. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> Which is you. You're the hero of this story. Thank you for making me not say that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I was describing uh, my experience at the, the Bang on a Can Summer Festival. Um, yeah, so it's cool. Uh, so like like all the other stuff I did, I'm you know playing chamber music, both of like composer fellows that were also there at the festival, but then also sort of quote standard repertoire mm-hmm. like like the Steve Reich. Uh, got to play this wonderful Zanakis piece. Um, but we also are doing other th- like one, one of the uh, I think unique things about about uh, Banglewood as we <laughs> as we call it. Nice. Um, so another like really prominent sort of institutional th- like summer orchestra thing happens. It's called Tanglewood. It's like started. Yeah. It's like related to the Boston Symphony. So it's like an hour away. So everybody calls. They've actually the Bang on a Can has been like formally directed to never use Banglewood in any like official stuff. <laughs> Wow, so there's a, some um, animosity there? I guess. <laughs> um, uh, but we all call it Banglewood anyway. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but it's cool because one of the things they like to do in, in their uh, interest in sort of tearing down walls between things uh, is the, sort of the separation sometimes between performers and composers. So like the first week, like every morning, we were like working on like Ghanaian drumming with this, with a like very like a legitimate like drumming master from Ghana and so like we're all doing stuff that none of us know how to do together um every like every day of every week that's there so it's this whole other side of the experience which is which is really cool um so there's you know, they they do the big bang on a thing bang on a can marathon concert like in New York City every year but they all we also have our own marathon that sort of concludes the festival it's about a six hour long concert nice uh, which is a lot of fun and then we all go hang out for a long time after that <laughs> um, there, there's a really wonderful american legion bar right next to the hotel that we all stay in that like they like love having us there and drinks are really cheap nice 
Hang on, a can's a really special place. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like you had a good time. <laughs> I did, and so this is a Massachusetts. I mean, I, the more I, time I spend in New England, the more I want to spend more time in New England. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so then I came home after that and was just kind of like, you know, sitting around on the couch for a few days. Cool. Now you're here. Now I'm here. School starts tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so for, for reference, um, Will wants to live in New England now, uh, currently lives in Iowa, and is from Tennessee. So just so everyone knows the trajectory there. <laughs> yeah, there's a nice triangle in mm-hmm. the works. Yeah. It's a, the boomerang effect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So we, uh, we're kind of reaching the end of the hour here. I have a lot of stuff that I need to plug, but I want to give you guys a chance to plug whatever you want. Uh, let's start with Michelle, since you haven't had enough opportunities to speak today. <laughs> okay. Um, I have a podcast called Welcome to My Show. I just recorded episode nine right before I got here. Oh, cool. I read my palm. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Found out some things about myself. <laughs> mm-hmm. Have you read your palm before? No. So you're learning. Right. I learning went through, through an internet tutorial. <laughs> And you can all learn how to read your palms with me when I upload it. Cool. So That'll check be that fun. out. Yeah. Yeah. I'll include a link to your show in the description oh, of thanks. this show. That'd be really cool. Yeah. I'll do it. <laughs> awesome. I actually gave this show a plug on this next episode. Oh, awesome. So thanks. <laughs> I'll include your links in my description as well. Sounds great. <laughs> uh, Ashley, would you like to plug anything? I got nothing. Okay. Uh, plug one of our cats. Oh, at least one. Yeah. Probably Just talk about a cat for like 20 seconds. Uh, So our oldest cat, her name is Weasel. Mm -hmm. She just turned seven. I mean, her name pretty much says it all. She's great. She's beautiful. She does weasel stuff. She's all white. She has a little peach peach spot on her head. I call it her dirty head. (laughs) (laughs) She's my little baby Weasel. Yep. She's been with us for a few years. She's She's a nice little girl to uh, only to us everyone else she's a little bit yeah uh, she does not like me distrustful nope. towards yeah yeah good job cool yeah <laughs> uh will i i'm sure you have a ton of stuff coming up is there anything that you'd like to plug on the show before we go today um we've already covered a lot of it so <laughs> yeah i think i gotta find something uh I think i've done enough plugging for today <laughs> yeah all right we'll we'll leave it at that uh we are playing <laughs> wombat at the maximum aims festival next oh, yeah. month so plug that yeah i'll plug that that's um towards the end of september <laughs> i don't need the specific date if you're interested if you live in Ames and listen to the show for whatever oh, I, reason I, I do have a plug oh yeah um maybe you could pull up the dates while i'm talking real quick sure i'll try uh one thing that's coming up that involves a lot of us is the uh 24 plus 24 concert yeah i do have the dates for that uh that will be on sunday september 9th at 7:30 in the concert hall at Voxman Music Building. Yeah, that's it's a it's a it's a fun thing that uh, we usually do at school uh, at the beginning of the year. So basically, uh, interested performers sort of make it known that they're interested, and then the composers all draw names out of a hat. They have 24 hours to write their person a piece, and then the person has 24 hours to learn it. Yeah. So it's just it's a nice concert of like 20 something, you know four minute pieces yeah so the pairing is made on friday evening and then the composer has like 24 hours from that point to write a piece of music and then they give it to the performer who then has 24 more hours to practice and then they have a concert sunday night something that's been going on here since i think 2011 or 12 uh Mm -hmm. my friends jason palomaro will huff and brian pankrat i believe were the founders of that here and oh, I've, cool. I've been involved with several of those. It's very fun. Yeah, I remember going. I've to been the on first both one. sides of them. Yeah. It's fun. Last year, I played a piece by Luke Cotman on the Barry Sax. It was pretty cool. <laughs> Thanks. It was fun. I should play that again sometime. Yeah. Do yeah. it. Well, now it's time for me to get into my plugs. I have a lot of them. All right. So, uh, as I've mentioned, the I Hear I See Fall concert series is. August 31st at The Mill, September 21st at The Java House, October 5th at High Ground Cafe, November 2nd at The Java House again, and December 1st at Trumpet Blossom. Uh, Carlos and I are currently working on getting all those shows filled up with performers. 
Uh, I already mentioned this, but the a August show will feature Purchase, Fever Love, and Tree Cloud. It's on 31st at the Mill at 8 p.m. I'll see you there, probably. Uh, <laughs> another plug, I've mentioned this a couple times on the show, but there's a free generative writing workshop open mic Sunday, September 9th, 4 p.m., Iowa City Public Library. Poets, you may be interested in checking that out. Here's a big one. Uh, Feed Me Weird Things just recently announced their fall season. Uh, all of these shows are at 9 p.m. at the Trumpet Blossom, except for one of them. I'll make a note when I get there. Monday, September 10th, Time Ghost, John Bender, and friend of the show, Gabby Vanek. September 13th, Everything is Terrible, The Great Satan. This is at the mill at 8 p.m. Woo-hoo. instead of Trumpet Blossom. Michelle and I are getting in for free. <laughs> yeah, no big deal. We're going to do some yeah, advertising just, for that show. We're kind of on the road team. <laughs> yeah, we are uh, We are VIP. very important people for this show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Next on the Feed Me Weird Things list, September 27th, Bill McKay, and again, friend of the show, Vera Rose Smith. October 5th, which uh, you may note is... Uh, also the date of the I Hear I See show at High Ground. Uh, but the Feed Me Weird Things show will feature Glenn Jones and Black Stork, who is Carlos Cotayo Solaris, friend of ours, I Hear I See organizer. Next on the list, October 18th, uh, Charlambides. Sorry, I don't know how to pronounce that. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll learn how to do that next time I talk about it on the show. Next show, October 27th. This is a rescheduled show from a few months ago. This is Forest Management with the Christine Burke Ensemble. You've heard them on the show quite a few times. And then after that, Monday, October 29th, Escapism. Not familiar with this group, but that should be a good time. So that's all the Feed Me Weird Things shows. Uh, you should check those out if you're into weird music, as the title suggests. Next week's radio show, August 26th, 4 p.m., here at KRUI. Uh... I've decided I'm not going to announce the ga- the guests that I'm going to have on the week before anymore because I've I have two weeks in a row where that didn't work out and I'm not feeling great about next week. <laughs> so I'll be I'll be here. Who knows what's going to happen? Uh, and I, I'll, I mentioned just now, uh, Divine Huff was going to be on today, but she had a death in the family, so uh, no no ill will towards her having to cancel this appearance. <laughs> and I hope she has a good trip home. And I'll see her when we reschedule the show. And uh, if you. If you like KRUI shows, you should check hers out Thursdays at 5. Okay, here's the long rant. <laughs> we have a website, IHearIC.com. If you scroll to the bottom of the site, you'll find links to our Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Patreon, iTunes, Google Play, Mixcloud, SoundCloud, and Stitcher profiles. If you have music that you'd like us to hear or shows coming up that you think we should know about, you want to play on one of our concerts, or you just want to say hi, the best way to reach us is IHearIC at gmail.com. Tom, I look forward to your emails. Okay, I did it. That's the plugs. Nice. How do you guys feel after all of that? I'm sweating. I, I feel second The pressure winded. was so high. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to close today's show with uh, some music. I think that's appropriate. Uh, you guys have any parting words before I shut off our mics? It's been nice knowing you. Rest in peace. <laughs> all right. Good night, everyone. Thanks for listening. Uh, This closing song is by the local band Hot Tang. The song is called Secret Beach, and it's from their EP titled Gone Fishing.
like 27 B stroke 6. The sound alternative. Sorry. I'm a bit of a stickler for paperwork, you see. I mean, where would we be if we didn't stick to the correct procedures? 897 KRUI. Hey, this is Phil from Alpine, and you're listening to KRUI, Iowa City, your sound alternative.